my presentation uh, at ASCO is in regards to a study that was that's called a Condor, and this is part of the FDA registration process for uh, PSMA imaging um, of prostate cancer patients here in the U.S. PSA, PSMA imaging is uh, with PET is pretty standard in many different parts of the world, and we have ample data to suggest that it's superior to the standard cross-sectional imaging and bone scintigraphy that we usually use in prostate cancer. Uh, however, to date, there has not uh, been the evidence to support regulatory approval in the U.S. Uh, for a PSMA uh, PET imaging, and therefore there's this effort to qualify several different tracers in prostate cancer for uh, PSMA PET imaging so that we, in the U.S. we can uh, utilize this very useful modality as well. So Condor is the second of uh, two prospective clinical trials designed in collaboration with the agency to, di to demonstrate the diagnostic performance of a PET tracer called PYL, which is an F18 radio-labeled uh, small molecule that's directed against uh, PSMA. And the design of the trial is that it focused really exclusively um, uh, on the rising PSA population uh, of men who have had definitive local therapy to their prostate cancer, and now they have biochemically relapsed. And these men are, are singularly in a difficult position because generally speaking, they have non-informative standard imaging scans. And so, <clears throat> although they have a detectable PSA that declares that they've relapsed, they don't have any imaging that can inform the clinician as to where the disease is in order to make decisions about whether to give salvage radiation therapy to the prostate bed or give systemic therapy for uh, uh, potential systemic disease. So the trial um, looked at uh, these men who presented uh, with a detectable PSA after their primary therapy, non-informative standard scans, Basically, it was a straightforward forward trial design. They had to undergo a single PYL PSMA PET image. And then there were subsequent studies to determine whether what was found on the PYL scan, whether that, those were true positives or false positives or not. And those subsequent studies could be either a biopsy of a, a seen lesion on the PSMA scan or a salvage, a salvage uh, lymph node dissection to detect uh, pathologic findings to correlate with the scans. They could undergo more conventional imaging like with flucyclovine PET or with choline PET or with a targeted MRI or CT in order to determine whether the lesions seen on the PYL were uh, true positives. Or finally, you could, the patients could have irradiated one of those lesions and then uh, seen if the PSA declined by at least 50% to, to sort of declare uh, whether or not that lesion actually represented the, the uh, disease. Um, and so, and there, are, in addition, were questionnaires of the clinicians treating these patients both before and after imaging in order to determine whether or not um, the, the uh, treatment plan would change on the basis of the PET scan. So uh, at the end of the day, uh, the performance of the um, PYL scan was really quite excellent. The uh, primary endpoint of the trial was a positive predictive value, uh, which was um, across three separate readers in 84.8%, uh, 85.6%, and 87% um, for those three respective readers. So that was uh, a positive uh, outcome. So this is a positive trial. It did meet its primary endpoint. And uh, that, that the, the level of confidence in terms of uh, the performance of the, uh, the positive predictive value was uh, maintained even at very low PSA levels. The median PSA level of this population was only 0 0.8. Um, so uh, the, on the, uh, the sort of clinical uh, implication of this was that 64% uh, of the men who underwent this scan did have a change in, in, their, in, in their intended treatment. Uh, by their clinicians. So it indicates that the clinicians believed the scan and that there was informative decision, there was inf informative information on that scan by which that the clinician thought this was actionable. For 20% of the patients, the goal of care changed from a non curative systemic therapy plan to a goal of care uh, that had cure as its endpoint to salvage local therapy. So a non curative goal of care to a curative goal of care. Uh, for 30% uh, of the patients, uh, the 
uh, treatment plan was changed so that it was just local therapy changed to either be supplemented by ADT or to be replaced by ADT. Um, and then in about 25% uh, of the patients, the plan changed from just observation to actually initiating therapy. So you can see that these are some pretty significant changes in the treatment plan. So I, I guess if I had to summarize, first, the primary endpoint was that uh, the positive predictive value, i.e. the likelihood that a positive finding on the scan was verified as a positive finding by these other means that I just described was quite good in the mid 80% range, and two, that uh, the information yielded to the clinician was felt to be reliable and actionable and changed a fair amount of the treatment plans in a significant way. And it's the natural next question, that is, were these changes in the goals of care actually in the patient's uh, favor or not? And that's, of course, a very, very different trial, right? That's, that's an intervention trial to see whether an intervention uh, influenced by a scan yields a change in clinical outcome. Remember that the purpose of this study was very focused on meeting a regulatory need and, uh, of, of establishing the performance characteristics of the scan itself, as opposed to an intervention-based trial where the scan would be uh, used to uh, make a change in intervention and then, or comp and then as, as part of that design, would have had to involve uh, another group of patients where the scan wasn't used uh, in order to inform the intervention. That just wasn't this, de this design. Those trials will need to follow this trial, but of course, in order to do that, you need a long-term follow-up plan because these patients have very low PSAs. They have very, very uh, late outcomes. and they, Some of these patients will be cured uh, by their intervention and you would have to wait quite a bit of time for other patients to see if they relapsed over time. So that kind of a study, which follows the rising PSA population out to a clinical outcomes, either that's, that could be metastasis-free survival, overall survival, or biochemical relapse survival, those are all very, very late time points. It would need to be a very different trial, answering a different question with very different timeframes and endpoints than the study that, uh, that Condor was.